Well, it's my pleasure and privilege to present to the public uh, a new book by Robert Kopp, The Concordian Formal, The Formula of Concord, uh, in a German translation. Um, what about the formula of Concord at all? Can you say something about the material that's been worked in there and the, yeah, the, the meaning of it? The, f the formula of Concord is the uh, 16th century effort, 1577. Uh, it was uh, finally polished and put together and ready for publication uh, three years later. Uh, it's, it's the final effort of Lutherans to come to agreement after 30 years of controversy over exactly what the uh, legacy of Martin Luther and Philip Melanchthon uh, meant. Uh, and it's a, it's a wonderful document, I think. It goes into much more detail than almost uh, any of the other documents in the Book of Concord. Uh, it's uh, longer, it's about the same length as the Apology of the Augsburg Confession. Uh, but it, it comes, uh, comes out with, a, 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 I think, a very clear exposition of exactly what Scripture teaches on a series of, of uh, issues that had disturbed the, the, Lutheran, uh, the Lutheran churches for uh, this more than quarter of a century. Um, and so uh, it's very important for our history, uh, but it's also, I think, a very, very modern, very 21st century kind of document because it, it speaks to the issues of today. Well, in the last decades, there have been uh, several approaches to dealing with the formula of Concord, again, with the era of confessionalization as it's labeled. Uh, what would you consider your kind of approach compared to others, other scholars dealing with the formula? Um, in some ways I could say that, that there is uh, a good deal of agreement among, among the few scholars, in, mainly in Germany and the United States, that have worked on the formula of late. Um, also Ernst Koch, a uh, guest professor uh, here in Oberursel, uh, has worked a great deal on it and, and has influenced me a good deal. Uh, for one thing, I think of, of what happened in the Formula of Concord as the last stage of the Reformation rather than the first stage of a developing orthodoxy. Those are games that historians play. But I think it's important to see that what we're doing here is really wrapping up what the Luther's and Melanchthon students had experienced in the classroom and, uh, and how they wanted to formulate uh, a, a harmony of teaching, uh, agreement in teaching, a concordia, uh, for the church of their time. But it served the church, the Lutheran churches, and, and also uh, served other uh, churches very well over the years uh, as, a, as a confession of our faith in Jesus Christ uh, and a, a clear exposition of what Scripture has to say on, on a number of other issues. Yeah. Well, could you give us just one example of uh, what makes the uh, formula of Concord uh, a modern type of document as I labeled it before? Well, it is obviously a historical document. Um, and it's set in the 16th century. And the first article uh, concerning, it's titled Original Sin, uh, talks about really what it means to be human. It talks about what it means to be human in terms of Aristotelian philosophy. That we can't use very much anymore since we don't talk about things in terms of substance and accident. Um, but especially after the Holocaust, it's so important for us to, to recognize that human creatures, also those who do not believe in Jesus Christ, are, are creatures of God, are, are worthy, have a dignity uh, of their own as creatures of God. And, uh, and so there are issues like that throughout the Book of Concord that are couched in the terminology of the, of the 16th century, uh, but speak directly to us. And I think that's the importance of a, of a historical introduction, that it places these things in their, in their context so that we can take them um, from their context and, and put them in our own uh, and do the kind of cultural translation as well as linguistic translation um, that's necessary. Well, talking about linguistic translation, having the translation in, into German out first, uh, could you uh, tell us something about the English version? When yes. it will be out? Uh, it will be out in April, uh, the third of a series published by Fortress Press that began with the 2000, uh, year, uh, the, in the year 2000 uh, translation of uh, the Book of Concord and then a, 
a collection of sources and, and context documents that uh, James Nestingen and I uh, edited. Uh, Tim Wingert and I edited the translation. And Jim Nestingen and I, along with my colleague uh, in St. Louis, Chuck Arendt, uh, have put together a book that includes what I've written here, as well as treatment of the other documents in the Book of Concord. So it will be um, coming out in April. Thank you.